What is going on guys, it's Amit, you're watching DevDreamer and welcome to lesson number 24 in JavaScript. In this lesson, we're going to learn all about the ternary operator. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below and choose all notifications by clicking the bell so you never miss an update. Okay, so welcome back to lesson 24. So in this lesson then, we're going to finalize our understanding on conditional statements by learning all about the ternary operator. Now, a couple of lessons ago, we learned all about the if else statement and how it can be used to test a value to see if it's true or false. The ternary operator does the same thing, but in a much cleaner and easier way. The word ternary means composed of three parts, and that's because the ternary operator consists of three operands. As mentioned, the ternary operator is equivalent to an if else statement. Let's write one of those first, and then let's see how we can rewrite it as a ternary operator. Okay, so we're going to create an if else statement to see if someone can vote or not. So we're gonna say let age, be assigned the value of 18 and then we're going to say if age is more than or equal to 18 then console.log you can vote else so if this condition is not true then we're going to say console.log sorry you can't vote okay so let's go ahead and save and of course we get you can vote in the console because our variable is equal to 18. Now let's see how we can rewrite this by using a ternary operator. So the way that this works then is first we say what the condition is. So let's just go ahead and copy it from here. Is age more than or equal to 18? Then it's space question mark. And then we say the code to be executed if the condition is true. So let's just say true. And then colon space. And then we say the code to be executed if this condition is not true. In other words, if it's false. So here we're going to say false. So again, this is how we write a ternary operator. This is the condition. Okay, then we say question mark. What comes immediately after the question mark is the code to be run if this condition is true. Then we say colon. And then after the colon is the code to be run if this condition is false. So these two values, true and false, are going to be you can vote and sorry, you can't vote respectively. Now, rather than doing this, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to assign our ternary operator to a variable called message. Okay. And then down here, we're going to console.log message. So the message that we're going to log to the console is either going to be you can vote, so just copy this and paste this in here. And if our condition is false, then this is going to be the message that's logged to the console. Because remember, we're assigning our ternary operator to the variable message and the console logging message. So let's go ahead and save. And once again, we get you can vote. Let's just change this to 17. And now we get sorry, you can't vote. Let's just comment this one out for now. Okay, so you see the ternary operator returns, sorry, you can't vote. And with just a single line, the ternary operator is able to do the same thing that our if else statement does. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Get rid of all this. Let's say let password be assigned the value of redruby123. And let's once again say let message be assigned the value of our ternary operator. So the first thing we want to do is we want to check to see if password is equal to redruby123. If it is, we're going to console.log success. And if it's false, we're going to console.log fail. So first then it's our condition. So we're going to say password. We look for strict equality on this. And let's just copy this like so. Then we do space question mark. Now if password is equal to redruby123, we're going to console.log success. And then we say colon. If it's false, we're going to console.log fail. Finally down here, let's console.log message. Let's save and of course in the console we get success because it's true password is equal to redruby123 now we can if we wanted to put this condition inside parentheses to make this look a bit easier to read okay like so if we save we get the same thing so as you can see then guys using a ternary operator is a lot quicker and a lot cleaner in comparison to using an if else statement okay let's look at one more example and for this i'm going to introduce you to something new here which is something we're going to be looking at in detail later on in this series. And that is all about how to use the document object model or simply DOM for short. The DOM allows us to interact with our HTML so that we can actually start outputting stuff onto the screen. If you recall, we looked at this very briefly earlier on when we looked at how to change the content of a paragraph. Well, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be creating a dark mode version of this page. So we're going to say, let body be assigned the value of and the way that we use the DOM is we say document dot and what we're looking for here is query selector. So here it's down here. And this basically enables us to select one of our tags in our HTML code. So I'm just going to say as a string here, let's select the body. 
So this here then is basically selecting the HTML. It's basically selecting this body tag. Next, I'm going to say let choice be assigned the value of dark. And then down here, we're going to do our ternary operator. So let's check to see if choice is equal to dark. If it's true, then take a body tag. Okay, we can just use a variable named body here, which is a reference to this. And we're going to say dot class list dot add and in parentheses dark mode. As I said, we will be looking at this in detail later on. Essentially, all we've said so far is this. If it's true that choice is equal to dark, let's put a space in here. So if it's true that choice is equal to dark, then take our body tag and add the class name dark mode. And we'll create this class in our CSS in just a second. Then we're going to say space colon. And now it's going to be the outcome if this is false. So here I'm just going to say null. So in other words, if it's true that choice is equal to dark, then add the class dark mode to body. If it's not, then don't do anything. So let's first go ahead and create our class. So in our style.css file here, we're going to say dark mode. And for this, we're going to say background color, or we can just say background for now, it's fine. It's going to be this black color. And then we're going to set color to white. Okay, so let's go ahead and save and let's see what happens. Perfect, so now we have this cool dark mode effect here because since our condition was true in our ternary operator, choice is equal to dark, then we've taken this class, class of dark mode, and we've added it to our body tag. Pretty cool. As I said, guys, we will be looking at the DOM in detail later on. I just wanted to show you this as I thought it was a pretty cool example of how to use the ternary operator. So guys, that's all about then how to use JavaScript's ternary operator. To summarize then, the ternary operator uses three operands, the condition, the outcome if it's true, and the outcome if it's false. It can be used to create a cleaner and shortened version of an if-else statement. And finally, ternary operators are really useful when we need to choose between two values. So let's take a look at your tasks for this lesson. Okay, so we've got two tasks for this lesson then. For task number one, I want you to rewrite the following if-else statement as a ternary operator. So here we're saying let message be assigned the value of an empty string. And then we're saying if one is more than 10, then assign the value condition is true to message. If it's false, then assign the value condition is false to message. So how would you rewrite this as a ternary operator? And for task number two, I want you to assign the value 12 o'clock to a variable called time, and then create a ternary operator to console log good morning or good evening, depending on the time. Now here, you don't need to use the current time. All we're looking for here is some sort of a conditional statement that tests to see if time is less than 12. If it is, then console log good morning. If it's not, console log good evening. Okay, so pause the video, try these out, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the answers. So how'd you get on then? Let's see. So first then, we need to write this if else statement as a ternary operator. So here I'm going to say, let message be assigned the value of, so first it's our condition. So if one is more than 10, then we say question mark and condition is true. So let's just go ahead and copy this. So if it's true that one is more than 10, the message is going to be assigned the value of condition is true. Then we say space colon. If it's false, then message will have the value of condition is false. Let's go ahead and console log this. So const.log message. And of course, in the console, we get condition is false because this condition is false. One is not more than 10. Okay, so that's task one. For the second task, we're going to say, let time be assigned the value of 12 o'clock. And then down here, we're going to say, let greeting be assigned the value of our ternary operator. So the first thing we want to do is we want to check to see if time is less than 12. So we're going to say time space less than 12. And if it's true that time is less than 12, then our variable greeting will have the value of good morning. If it's false, it will have the value of good evening. So finally, let's console.log greeting and the console logs good evening because this condition is false. Time is not less than 12. It's actually equal to 12. If we change this to 11 and we save this, okay, now the console gives us good morning because it's true, time is less than 12. And so our true condition is run. So guys, well done on completing those tasks. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to start learning all about loops. So we've covered conditional statements, and now we're going to move on to loops. And we'll start with the most common type of loop, the for loop. So be sure to tune in. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe down below. And I'll see you on the next one.